Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life and welcome back to another prisoner review. Now, this is going to be a good one, so make sure you grab yourself some popcorn and get yourselves comfy. Prisoner Cell Block H, Episode 3, Frankie's Riot. Now this is the episode where it all kicks off. So at the end of episode 2, B. Smith had killed her husband Harry Smith in revenge for not looking after their daughter Debbie and B. blamed him for the death of Debbie. So Frankie has now taken over the prison as top dog and is causing mayhem, not realizing that B is on her way back. Now when the episode begins, Frankie ends up making a point to the women, the officers and even the governor. While they are all having breakfast in the dining room, the bell goes for them all to get up and go to work, but Frankie and the girls don't move. Apart from Karen Travis who goes to stand up, but Doreen tells her to sit back down or Frankie will kill her. So Frank, you know, Karen ends up getting a warning off Frankie about this later on in the episode. But anyway, back to this scene. They stay seated and quiet and Vera and Meg, they go and get Mrs. Davidson. And when she arrives, Frankie stands up and she's like, morning governor. Erica, she wants to know why the women aren't at work. And she goes on to say that she was under the impression that the women do what Frankie tells them. And this goes straight to Frankie's head, giving Frankie the feeling of full control, which in my opinion is quite dangerous. Frankie then tells the women to go to work and this is going to play an important part in this episode. We are also introduced to Chrissy Latham in this episode for the first time, a prisoner who seems to be on Frankie's team and in one scene Chrissy is having a psych session with Bill Jackson, Meg's husband, and Chrissy ends up making a pass at him and kisses him. Luckily, Bill sends Chrissy on her way and Chrissy is not happy. Now my first impressions on Chrissy Latham is that she is one jealous woman who doesn't like a rejection, particularly from men. Marty comes to the prison to see his dad and his mum, Meg and Bill, but Bill is a bit busy so Meg goes to see Marty alone. Now Marty tells Meg that he has problems as well as the prisoners that she's looking after. So Meg arranges for her and Bill to finish work early to meet up with Marty later on and they're going to go somewhere and have a good chat. Has Marty got his girlfriend pregnant maybe? Who knows? Everything is bubbling along nicely until B returns and it's a great moment. So Vera knows that B is on her way back so Vera goes and gets Frankie to take her to that induction area where the paddy wagon brings in new prisoners. Now Frankie is totally unaware to what's about to happen and when the paddy wagon door opens out steps B Smith who stares straight down at Frankie. It's such a brilliant scene and Vera is loving all of this trouble that she is creating. The news soon spreads that B is back and Frankie warns the women that B is not taking over as top dog and that they are going to be doing another sit down protest in the dining room at lunch. I forgot to mention Marilyn is feeling horny and she's blowing the fuse in order to get her electrician boyfriend Eddie in for some jiggy jiggy. Lynn Warner she's still on her hunger strike until someone takes her innocence in her case seriously. Once again, I could never give up my food. B is taken straight to the dining room after her induction. Rather than taken to solitary for 24 hours, Vera plants this seed in Erica's head that it's probably a good idea for B to get back into power sooner rather than later and Erica agrees. Will she live to regret this decision? Well, B is taken to the dining room by Vera before the women arrive. Frankie and the girls then arrive and Frankie goes over to B and says that she is sitting in her seat. B turns around and just says, you've just been keeping it warm for me. Now, I'm not sure whether at this stage in Prisoner that the top dog had their own chair in the dining room. I don't think this is something that goes on in later episodes. I could be wrong, but for, you know, at the moment, I, do, I don't think that's the case. I'm thinking at this stage only, this table and this chair is the top dog. So 
Frankie, she is forced to move on to a different table and all of the women watch. The tension then rises to unimaginable levels and the women are all watching. I also forgot to mention an inmate called Rosie who is very heavily pregnant. Now she starts getting contractions and Lynn runs off to get Meg who, who comes running over to the cell to check on Rosie. In the dining room, the bell goes and everyone sits in silence for a moment wondering what on earth is about to happen. B then stands up slowly and a few of the women start to stand up too. Frankie starts to sweat and she's about to lose her shit. B leaves the dining room with the other women who stood up with her and Frankie and the other women remain seated. It's pretty much a 50-50 split of the women who have chosen to follow. Vera then just pushes Frankie's buttons and Frankie then completely loses it. Frankie gets up and throws this table over and all of the women, they get up and they start trashing the dining room to pieces. Vera and this other officer so they go running down the hall and they activate those automatic gates to slam, you know, to slam locked. So Frankie and the women can't get out. And Frankie and her crew, they come out and they jump on the gate screaming to let them out. B and her crew, they come running down another corridor just next to Frankie's lot, hurling a load of abuse. The riot alarm sounds while Eddie and Marilyn are having a cheeky roll around in the attic. Rosie is in labor in one of the cells as this alarm goes off and Meg runs off to get help but Meg oh god she ends up in the dining room not realizing what's happening and Frankie Chrissy and the rest of the girls they end up taking Meg hostage a huge chain of events just collides together and it's bloody brilliant this is one of those episodes that you just can't take your eyes off this screen even by today's standards you are on the edge of your seat watching this episode it eventually comes down to B versus Frankie they both demand to the governor and the officers to open the gates and just let B and Frankie fight it out for top dog but of course Erica refuses Bill is panicking because his wife Meg is stuck in the middle of this riot as a hostage and Rosie she's still in for labor now Frankie does let Rosie out of the area so that she can go and see the doctor and then Frankie comes up with a plan in order to grab some keys and to open the gates and have a fight with B once and for all god this episode is a cracker Frankie ends up telling Bill Jackson that they will release Meg as a hostage just as a gesture of goodwill. <laughs> yeah, right. However, when Bill and the officer with the keys unlock the gate, all hell breaks loose. The women throw Meg into Bill's arms while the rest of them, they jump on top of the officer that has the keys and they steal the keys. They then open up the gates where B and her crew are and then it's just game on. It literally just turns you know into a free-for-all all the women just start fighting each other while the officers and the governor they're watching this but there's nothing that they can do Frankie and B they do end up fighting but it's not really that much of a fight because B just pretty much smashes Frankie onto the floor while all of this chaos is erupting it's insane it's crazy it's the mother of all fight scenes because literally all of these women they're just going nuts but the fighting soon comes to an abrupt end when Lynn Warner lets out the mother of all screams because someone is on the ground with a stab wound. It's Bill Jackson. He has been stabbed with a pair of scissors and he's in a bad way. Now Meg crawls over to her husband and she looks up at B and Frankie and says, are you satisfied? Have you got what you wanted? And the episode ends on this massive cliffhanger, the biggest cliffhanger so far in this show. Guys, this episode was everything. It was gripping, jaw-dropping, scary. It's just wow. I can remember when I first saw this episode, I was quite young. I was probably around 12 or 13 years old. 
my parents got the first few episodes of Prisoner on VHS tape and like I said when I first saw this episode I was blown away. It's one of those episodes where if you need a pee you literally hold it in until the episode has ended. You do not want to get up or pause anything. You're willing to sacrifice your bladder until the episode has ended. So this was the first ever riot in Prisoner and believe me now when I say that it will not be the last. A couple of Prisoner slash Wentworth comparisons now. So obviously in Wentworth it's Meg who gets stabbed but in Prisoner it's Bill. Now the fact that all the women they all end up in a free for all fight is very similar to the Jax and Frankie crew fight in Wentworth's first ever episode. This episode was just off the scale and bear in mind this first aired in 1979 so can you imagine the insane tension that people had back then when watching this? This episode. It's a 10 out of 10 episode, all rounder, absolutely fantastic. So guys, if you've seen this episode before, let me know in the comments box below what are your thoughts on the famous Frankie Doyle riot. Okay guys, well, we have come to the end of this video today, but fear not, another prisoner review will be on the channel very shortly. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. And guys, thank you all for watching and I will see you all again very, very soon. Hey guys, now this is just a bit of added bonus at the end of this video, so I don't know if you guys noticed in that video, but as I was wrapping the video up towards the end, um, one of my ring lights turned itself off. Um, but I have two ring lights, one pointing at me, one pointing at the green screen, because it separates us and that's how I can create the effect. Um, but while I was filming that, you know, this video today, um, one of the ring lights went off. Let's have another quick sneaky look at that moment. So guys, if you've seen this episode before, let me know in the comments box below what are your thoughts on the famous Frankie Doyle riot. And so yeah, as some of you guys know, if you follow my personal YouTube channel, uh, this house is slightly haunted. Well, it may not be the house, it may be the area, but yeah, spooky things happen in this house and that happened live as I was recording. I'm a little bit freaked out, but it's fine. I've turned all the lights on and I've, I've opened all the windows and I've let the spirits out, hopefully. But yeah, this is just a little bit of an added bonus. A ghost was playing around with the ring light as I'm recording a video. Oh dear God. <laughs> anyway, see you later, guys.